Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 1st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storms and Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Rob today wrote, well, about uh, Nmap without Nmap, always a popular topic. In this particular case, Rob looked at a built-in uh, PowerShell command. It's part of the net TCP IP module and it's test net connection or short TNC. This tool pretty much is meant to debug connections. So with that, you're able to check if a port is listening or not. Essentially, one of the key features of Nmap. Now, one thing Raw points out, it's actually pretty slow in order to do sort of a port scan of multiple ports, but it also has even a trace route feature built in. A couple more tricks from Rob as part of his uh, post, including how to improve the speed a little bit uh, for port scan, but well, uh, still not really its strong point, but in a pinch, if all you have is PowerShell and a couple ports that need to be scanned, it's probably a valid tool. Of course, the big thing on Tuesday will be the open SSL update that's supposed to become available sometime in the morning East Coast time. Now, uh, we don't have really any details at all other than it will affect open SSL 3.0, which was released about a year ago. So any operating system that uh, receives sort of a major update within the last year is likely vulnerable if it does include OpenSSL. OpenSSL 1.1.1 is not affected. It will also receive a patch, but it will not be a security patch. Well, as soon as we have more details on Tuesday, we'll uh, certainly try uh, to uh, dissect uh, what it means and publish a post about it. And talking about critical vulnerabilities, uh, ConnectWise on Friday released an update for its Recover and R1 soft server backup products, uh, which suffer from, well, a critical vulnerability that does allow remote code execution and also access to confidential data. Since uh, this affects a backup product, of course, there is a good chance that this confidential data will include include all of your uh, backups. Not a lot of details from Connectwise, but if you're using the product, sounds like something you do want to update quickly. Apparently, the vulnerability was originally discovered by Huntress Labs, who may soon be uh, publishing a blog post with details how uh, this particular uh, vulnerability could be exploited. And they state that they found via Shodan about 5,000 vulnerable uh, servers that would now be susceptible to essentially have ransomware installed, according uh, to uh, Kyle Hansloven. Well, and what's more critical than a critical vulnerability that's certainly a vulnerability that's already being exploited on Friday. Google did release a new update for Google Chrome that does fix just that. One single security vulnerability, CVE 2022-3723, a type confusion in V8, the JavaScript engine being used by Google Chrome. And uh, yes, uh, that's apparently already being exploited. And Kaspersky published a very extensive uh, write-up of uh, the load info malware. Now, they actually split it into uh, two parts on the SecureList uh, website. And uh, what's sort of interesting here is, first of all, that this is actively being modified and evolving a malware. Actually, uh, one thing they go over is sort of all the changes that were made to the malware in sort of uh, recent months and the last couple of years. And uh, this malware is apparently used, or at least uh, the incident that Kaspersky is covering to target Japanese uh, politicians. What sort of caught my interest here is that uh, this malware actively exploits a DLL site 
sideloading vulnerability in security software. Of course, this is always sort of one of these things. We have all these updates, and I mentioned them in the past for various antivirus and malware products, which always have to run with elevated privileges. So they're really sort of one of the targets for privilege escalation, and that apparently is what's happening here. Uh, Somewhat good news, it arrives, it starts out all with your usual malicious Word document, which, uh, well, hopefully you have a way to detect by now. If not, uh, Kaspersky here offers a good number of indicators of compromise and such that should help you at least detect some of the older versions of uh, this particular infection vector. And everybody using Spring Security for authorization, you better read up on the vulnerability that was just patched in Spring Security that does allow the bypass of some of these authorization rules. Now, whether or not you're vulnerable depends on which uh, functions you really uh, use here and uh, how you're using them. So I refer uh, to the bulletin here that uh, was published by VMware uh, for any uh, details but affected is version 5.7 prior to 5.75 and 5.6 prior to 5.69. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.